Sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all the way round is sinking sand, all the way round is sinking
ਗੱਲ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਨਾਹਾ ਹਾਂ ਇਸ ਕੇਸ ਕਾ ਹਾਲ ਸੋ ਹਾਲ ਆਲ ਵਕੀਰ ਇਸ ਨੰਦਾ ਹਾਲ ਹੈਲਪ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਬ੍ਰੇਕਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਯੋਰ ਹੈਲਪ Two hundred seventy-one. Two hundred and seventy-one. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing sky. Against the foe in hills below, let all our strength be hurled. It is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph, triumph. A whirlwind's press where gone o'er every field The faith by which they conquered death Is still our shining shield Faith is a victory, faith is a victory Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world Oh, we find dread array Let us end and onward to the fray. Salvation town on each head with truth I'll about. The earth shall tremble with our tread and echo with our shout. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Some of these songs we <clears throat> haven't said, sang in a, in a while, and and they get tongue, you get tongue tied trying to lead them sometimes. Uh, let's turn to number nine hundred thirty-seven. Nine hundred and thirty-seven. <clears throat> What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a friend we have everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often fall. As 
we uh, prepare ourselves to gather around the table for the Lord's Supper this morning, let's sing number 100. When we meet in sweet communion, Our freedom was bought and paid for. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' holy name.
Heavenly Father, we come to thee again, asking, Lord, thy blessing on this cup, this fruit of the vine, that we take and drink while remembering the blood of thy son shed on the day of his death. Lord, we thank thee for thy sacrifice and for his sacrifice. May the things we say and do be just be correct in your sight. Through Jesus' name. So turn and mark your books to number 446. 446 will be our song of invitation. And then turn to number 319. <clears throat> number 319. Uh, 319. 446. Uh, 446. Yeah, 446 is our song invitation, 319. I need the every hour most gracious Lord. No tender was my kind can be suffered. I need Oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come unto 
Today's scripture reading is going to be from the book of Psalms, chapter 37, and we have a lot, so I'll tell you all on the way. Psalm chapter 37, the first set is verses 3 through 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. Verses 7 through 9. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. Verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. And the final verse, 39. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord, and he is their strength in the time of trouble. Good morning. It is good to see everyone here this morning. If uh, step outside, of course, it's cool and windy, but inside we have a very nice place to meet that God has blessed us with. Our God has blessed us beyond measure in so many ways and in ways we don't even begin to comprehend. This morning, we want to look at the thought of how to face evil. We know that evil is real. We even discussed a great deal of that in Bible class. And I appreciate all the comments in class. 
Uh, I was filling in for Butch today, and uh, some time back I filled in for Scott, and I got more comments from the class than I made. So I appreciate classes like that when people are, are commenting and involved in the class. But evil can be faced. We can deal with it. Now, there's one word we're going to start with, and that's God. God is the source of overcoming evil. And I want us to understand something. We, we live in a world, I think everybody understands. Somebody, somebody I think, even made a comment to uh, the nature of this in some sort in Bible class. But you look at the world and chaos is taking place, to say the least, what's taking place taking place in the Ukraine, uh, Israel, and then we look at our, our own country. It seemed like it's turned upside down. It reminds me what the prophet said, when good is called evil and evil is called good. It certainly seems that way, doesn't it? So we see evil all around us. How do we as God's people deal with that? Well, the Bible gives us answers to that. Now, certainly I'm not going to cover every single point, but I'm going to give us some points this morning that, that I think will be a help to us to deal with the thought of evil and what we face every day as we live in this world. And sometimes we sing the song, and it's uh, Scott talked about been a long time since we sung uh, some of those songs that we did, but there's another song that I haven't heard in a long, long time. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And so we understand, yes, there's chaos in this world. There always will be. There always will be problems with evil. Satan certainly is at work and his forces are trying to take as many souls as possible. But God and his people are trying to win as many souls as possible. But number one, how do we face evil? Trust in the Lord. We must trust God. Don't put your trust in yourself. If you do that, we are going to fail. Uh, God is the source of our help. And notice, of course, Philip read all these scriptures, and they all co come from Psalm 37. But Psalm 37, verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. But trust in the Lord. I think if we look at our own lives, this would certainly include me, we look back and see that, well, I was trusting in myself rather than turning it over to God. Do we ever do that? Certainly we do. We put our trust in ourselves more than we do God. Brother, we need to take everything to God in prayer. We sung a song about that just a, just a moment ago. Take it to, to God in prayer. Turn it over to him. God has the answer to everything. And has it God, and has it our Lord Jesus Christ, told us that he would never leave us nor forsake us? We're not here by ourselves. And so we have to learn to trust in God. He will, he will provide our needs. Yes, we do face evil every day of our lives. You go out to the job, to school, Wherever it may be, you go to Walmart. We even mentioned in class, some, uh, sometimes you see somebody correcting their child, uh, at least it's so-called correcting, and they're using profanity to correct the child. Well, that's certainly not the way uh, that it's proper to correct a child, but we as God's people must trust in the Lord. Know that he is the one that is in control. It's not the government. Yes, the government has its place and does its thing. But you know who's in control of all things? It is God Almighty. 
and that never will change. So number one, put your trust in God and he will lead us. And isn't it a comforting thought to know that we're not here by ourselves, that God didn't just leave, leave us here to fend for ourselves, but we have somebody that will help us along the way. Number two, delight in the Lord. That, that is where our delight shall be. Now, that's not where uh, the world delights. It's not in the Lord. And let's notice Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Now, notice, that's the first part. You, you must do that. Delight thyself where? In the Lord. And, of course, we come to the New Testament. We understand how to be in Jesus Christ. Where are spiritual blessings for us as, as Christians? Are they not in the Lord? Yes, the period that we're studying about in Psalm 37 is not the Christian age by any means, but we live in the Christian age. Where, where are all the uh, spiritual blessings? They are in Christ Jesus our Lord. But now keep on reading the verse. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Notice the next word. And he shall give thee the, the, the desires of thine heart. Now that doesn't mean the things that we desire that are wrong. Some people desire things that are wrong. That's not what he's talking about. But the things that we have need of, we will never be without if we delight in the Lord. Now, Sometimes we, uh, like I said earlier, we trust more in self than we do God. But where is our delight? Now, there's things of the world that we really enjoy doing. Uh, some people enjoy golf. I never tried that. Uh, I imagine that would be something very interesting if I did. But each of you have various hobbies or things that you enjoy doing. One that a lot of you know, I, I like uh, watching the Lakers play. And if you've been, they come up with this new thing called the in-season tournament. It's not the NBA championship, but it's kind of a tournament that takes place through the regular season, so many games, and then you have two teams and they play, and then you have the winner of the in-season tournament. Well, guess what? The Lakers won the in-season tournament. I was happy last night. That's when the game took place. But guess what? Also, even before that game took place, me and a friend of mine were already talking about the game during the week. This game's going to take place. Well, guess what? Also, Saturday comes. I know what time the game is, so I take the time to be ready to watch the game. Why? Why do I do that? Because I delight in that. I, I enjoy that. But now, here the psalmist says, delight in the Lord. Now, and when you do that, he's going to take care of you. Now, I want you to stop and think for a moment. There's nothing wrong with uh, being a Lakers fan or a fan of some other team or a football football team, all that's uh, fine and well in its place. But our greatest delight in this world should be in the Lord. That should be where we put our emphasis, isn't it? In the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to think about something for a moment. During the uh, regular work week, as we go through the work week, and I understand when I say this, that we have jobs to go to, and sometimes we don't have as much time as somebody, say, even perhaps as myself, where I can set aside every day to look at the Word of God. But with that being said, there still should be time daily to delight in the Lord. Are we daily Bible readers? Do we take the time each day to study the Word of God? Now, 
Do we delight in that? Do we have joy in that? Does it fill our heart with joy that we can meet with other Christians? This morning, as we have gathered on the first day of the week, as God has commanded us, there's a delight by the uh, people, the children of God, that we can be here and that we can have the fellowship one with another, that we can have fellowship with God, that we can have fellowship with Jesus, that we can have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That is something that we should delight in, isn't it? We should have happiness more than anything else. Yes, I'm glad the Lakers won that, but that pales in comparison to the delight in the Lord. Well, it's, it's fine to play golf or uh, I know somebody took a welding test just recently. Well, it's, it's okay to, to delight in doing things of that nature. But our greatest delight, it's in the Lord, isn't it? That's what matters more than anything else. What did we do just a moment ago? We partook of the Lord's Supper. That is where our greatest delight is on the first day of the week to come here and make a remembrance of Jesus Christ to delight in the Lord. Number three, commit to the Lord. Now, uh, some people are, when it comes to sports, it doesn't matter whether it's basketball, football, baseball, they're what you call bandwagon fans. As long as that team is winning, they're a fan of that team. But you look at that team, have a, a few bad years, and they kind of abandon the team. They may be a, a fan of a different team all of a sudden. We don't do that with God, though. We should commit to God, make a commitment to God. What does it mean to make a commitment? What do you think of when you make a commitment? Well, I have determined that this, this uh, commitment that I have made, I will fulfill. I will do whatever it takes to do what I promised to do. Now, let's notice in Psalm 37, verse 5, the very next verse. Commit the, uh, thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Now, notice, if you, if you commit to the Lord, notice what happens. And he shall bring it to pass. What? He shall take care of you. If you make that commitment to the Lord, he will take care of you. But what do we see? And I've seen members of the body of Christ do this. They put all the weight on their shoulders. They don't turn it over to the Lord. And when, when they do that, that weight's going to crush them. God can carry the weight. We can't carry the weight by, by, by ourselves. We should commit to the Lord. And it makes me think of something in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 6 when Jesus was talking about the, the things that we have need of, and it's still the same today, well, we, we need clothes. We need food to eat. We need a place to live, don't we? All those things that we, we need every day of our lives. Well, Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 30, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. But notice that first word, seek. That, that means we have to apply ourselves. Well, if I was just a casual fan, I may not have even known when the game was last night. Well, you mean, you mean they've already played? Well, you know, that's good. That's a casual fan. But if I'm committed to it, I, I know when they play. I know when they win. I know when they lose. I know the players on the team. Why? Because I'm committed to it. A lot of Saints fans here. Well, I bet you know uh, a lot of the players on the team who they are. I bet especially when they won the Super Bowl, I bet you knew who the quarterback was. Who was that? Well, that, that was Brett Favre, right? Uh, I don't think so. I heard boy, some people answered on that one, didn't they? Uh, that well, see, we, we know that we're committed to that. We've got some cowboy fans. 
Well, let's stop there. Let's don't go any further. Sorry, Scott. We, you can only have so much. But we're committed to certain things, but our number one commitment should be to the Lord. But he has promised, when you do that, as Jesus said in the New Testament, if you will do that, all the things that you have need of in life, he's going to supply. You will have those things. Now, the next one that we have, number four, rest in the Lord. Notice Psalm 37, verse 7. Rest in the Lord. Now notice this next phrase. It's important. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Notice, wait patiently on the Lord. Rest in the Lord. That, that means, well, there, there's things going on, and boy, it sure seems like my neighbors and all them, boy, they, they have a boat hooked to their, their vehicle. They have an RV and Man, I don't have those things. Why, why don't I have those things? You rest in the Lord. You wait patiently on the Lord. Now, when I say that, that doesn't mean you're going to have the RV and the boat. That's not what we're talking about. But, you know, when you see those things that some of your neighbors may have, now some may uh, use it and they have a great attitude, and that's, that's good and well. No problem with that. But sometimes those people that have the things that you see in life, they have bills they can't afford to pay. They have strife within the home. But think of the child of God. He's waiting patiently on the, war, uh, on the Lord, and he has the things, as we discussed just a moment ago, they've been supplied by God to him, but he has something else that his neighbor that is not following God doesn't have. What is that? salvation because he's waiting on the Lord he has obeyed the Lord and he has salvation in the Lord and he puts his trust in him when's the Lord going to, going to come we don't know we don't know when that's going to be it could be in our lifetime it could be after our lifetime but if we die in this lifetime we know that we have a place called paradise that awaits us, sometime called Abraham's bosom, and where we see on the other side the rich man that didn't, didn't do so well on the other side. He did well what? In this life, he was the guy that always had the boat, the RV, and all the things in this world, but he didn't have salvation. He didn't have the things that mattered most of all. I want you to think for a moment. I want you to think before you walk out that door because we face a lot of things. There may be things right now you're facing that the rest of us not even aware of. Put your trust in God. Amen. Wait patiently on God. He'll take care of you. Don't despair. Don't wring your hands. God's still in control. You can trust him. And you have your salvation in the Lord. That's worth more than all the riches of this world. That's worth more than all the 401ks, all the trips that people make around the world, uh, all the cruises that people go on. Your salvation is the most important thing there is. Now, number five, stop being angry. Sometimes we're angry. You ever, you ever get angry? Nobody wants to admit to it, do we? Uh, other people get angry, not me. But there's times we, we've been angry. Notice what uh, verse 8 says, Psalm 37 still. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any, any wise to the, to the evil. Don't give over to the evil. Now, that's given over to Satan when we do that. We get caught up in the things, uh, just, uh, I don't know if it's on TV, read about it, whatever, but just recently, and I don't know what state because it happens so often, but something, road, uh, road rage, 
led to somebody's death. Not the first time, is it? Won't be the last time, will it? Anger, why? You cut me off in traffic, I'm going to get you. Now, we don't do that, do, do we? We don't have that attitude, do we? Uh, we well, we, we shouldn't. And I've told this story before, true story, uh, about Brother Jenkins that was here. He's dead now, Jerry Jenkins. Uh, they came from uh, a Roebuck Parkway congregation in uh, uh, Birmingham. And um, he was in line at the bank, and he got impatient with the person that was in front of him. So he got on the horn to honk that horn. It's time for you to get out of the way. Well, the person stuck their head out of the window, uh, out of the window and is one of the members of the congregation. Well, that could be embarrassing, couldn't it? That's what happens when we're angry. It gets the best of us. In any way, and it's giving over to the devil. Don't, don't give in to Satan. He's getting the best of us when we're doing that. Number six, wait on the Lord. We've mentioned this in some part already, but we're going to look at, uh, at it further. In verse nine, it says, for evildoers, notice now, and think about what we just read about angry people and uh, what they do and how people act sometimes. But he said, for evildoers shall be cut off. But now, what's the, what happens to the other side? But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. See, God's going to bless them. Don't get caught up in what people of the world are doing. We have something far greater than they have. Now, there's people, well, last night, they were, they were partying, living it up, right? Living the good life. Uh, you wonder how, this morning, how many of them have hangovers that they wish they didn't have? How, how many of them may have trouble that they didn't have to have? But they're in trouble in some form, some fashion, uh, actually, also, people know that I, I'm a Vikings fan. Well, this past week, unfortunately, one of the, the offensive coordinator got uh, arrested uh, for drunk driving. So that's not a good thing. Number one, you have to pay the penalty, whatever they come up with. But it embarrasses, uh, embarrasses you pretty much to all the football uh, people. Well, you see, we give over to evil. I, I'm living it up. I'm having the good life. You see those commercials advertising the beer. If you'll drink this kind of beer, boy, you'll, you'll really be somebody. And man, the guys, if you drink this kind of beer, the girls will really like you. It doesn't show all the heartache that's been, uh, that's, uh, that's run rampant because of that. It doesn't give you the true picture. They're lying to you. Satan has been a liar from the very beginning. He lied to Adam and Eve, and he's still lying. All those good times, it's not going to work out that way. Eventually, it may be good for a, a while, but eventually it's going to come crashing down at some point. Certainly at the day of judgment, certainly at the day of our death, if we die before the Lord co uh, comes, if we have died in a way that we're living that is ungodly. Notice verse 34 in, in our uh, text here of Psalm 37. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. See it. The wicked, oh, oh they, they were having this great time. Well, it did end, and now they got the heartaches. You don't have those because you didn't live that way, oh, hopefully. You don't, have to, you don't have to deal with that type of thing because you live for the Lord. You waited on him rather than listening to Satan's advertisements that this is going to all be good, it's going to all be fun, but it's not. It's not all that it claims to be. And then 
Number seven, walk with God. The steps, this is verse 23. The steps of a good man, what? Are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. There again is that word. When you walk in the steps of the Lord, what? You have delight in God. There's a lot of people that live with no hope. They get up each day. It's, you know, what's my purpose in life? You live and get what you can in this life. You know, that's going to be the end of it, right? Get all the things that you can. No, not so with God's people. They understand a little bit differently because they wait on God and they keep his way and he's going to, they're going to see that the wicked are going to be cut off. You, as God's people, this morning, this group, and all the Christians around the world that are following God's will should see and notice because you know the word of God, what's going to happen to the wicked that live that way? They're going to be cut off. There's going to be a payday someday. There always is. You, ha you have to pay the piper at some point. And then number um, eight, uh, number seven, uh, maybe, oh, I got number seven. Number eight, and the last one, know that God is your strength. It's not in me. Anything that I can do as a preacher, as a Christian, anything in life, it's because God helps me to do it. Notice Psalm 37, verse 39, our last verse. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Well, we, we do know. There's going to be times of trouble. Life's not always easy, is it? Now, if you've lived any period of time at all, you know that. Life's not always easy. What do you do? Well, you panic, you quit. Um, you, no, you trust in God. God is your strength. He'll take care of you. Don't panic. Wait on the Lord. Evil can ruin a man. But if you'll trust in the Lord, we can overcome all this evil and we can live faithful to God. You can go to heaven. God wants you to go to heaven. Isn't that a good thing? God wants me to go to heaven. That's a pretty good thing, isn't it? I, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad for that. God's for me. And if God's for us, who can be against us, Romans 8? Now, we, we understand in the context there, uh, there's plenty of people against us. Satan is against us, but who can be against us successfully if we'll wait and trust on the Lord, our strength? This morning, if you're not a Christian, would you please consider becoming one by repenting of your sins? Turn away from them. Confess Jesus as the Christ and be baptized in water. If there's anything amiss in your life as a child of God, would you come? We want you to go to heaven. We want to go to heaven with you. If we can help in any way, please come as we stand, as we sing. While we pray and while we plead, while you see your soul's deep need, while your father calls you home, please not my father. Why now? Why not now? Why not come to Jesus now? Why not?
Father, Father God, uh, we are so thankful, Father, to you once again, Father, for your son and, and his life here. And Father, we know as Christians that every first day of the week, Father, as we come together, we should uh, lay aside a portion, Father, that could be used to help our needy saints, Father, and to further the work that is set before us, Father. And we pray, our Lord, that this offering that we give to you this day is pleasing and acceptable in that sight. Father, we pray for those who are, who are not able to give the day, Father, but bless them, Father, that they will have the, the needs, Father, to, for themselves and also the needs to share next time we come in this, this moment, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. That's what Scott was looking for. So, this draws a conclusion of the morning worship, and we're looking forward to everyone to come back for the evening worship. Uh, do I need to take a picture and see if y'all in the same spot this evening? Okay, so uh, if there's no other, uh, Jackie, go ahead. Okay, good news. Let us stand and we'll be dismissed at this time.